Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. It's September of 2023, and this is Star Wars Saturdays. We're trying a little experiment this month where it's called my uh, OSR 5 and 1. I'm, I'm exploring different sci-fi-themed um, OSR, old school renaissance revolution, whatever, what have you, whatever you want the R to stand for, you go for it. OSR, it's like KFC. We don't talk about what it actually stands for. Uh, <laughs> you like that? So this is our third of five. And, and the concept is that everyone created characters in session one. Well, Keith joined us in session two. Uh, but we carry forward those characters. And I found I didn't anticipate this as we did as we started off the uh, journey, but I found that there's like little, not, I mean, not vestigial limbs, but like carry-ons from each of the previous games. Where, oh yeah, this is a cool boon and bane thing. Let's carry that into White Star. Oh, this is this meditations thing is a funny and interesting OSRE way to do a Jedi. Let's carry that from White Star onto Explorers, and so that's well. I've had to like hack and rule it's not rules and all that good stuff uh, into this game. Dave Bezio's Explorers. It's uh, the letter X dash plurs, which is uh, really not great for searching my files. Uh, for some reason, Microsoft does not like if I put Explorers, it doesn't find it. If I put X dash plurs, then sometimes it finds it. Regardless, I, I just put it in a sub uh, subcategory folder. Not that anyone cares. So in our Explorers game, the characters have been reinterpreted a little bit. Several of the stats, the Strength X, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma, that exist in the first two games, those stats, some of them map very well to the four stats of Explorers. But for the two that didn't, we averaged. So uh, that means that the, the uh, physique is an average of uh, constitution and strength. And presence is a constant is is charisma plus wisdom, uh, and then we have agility, which was dexterity, intelligence, which was intelligence. Uh, this game has skills packages that come with the four base classes. Uh, there were supplements for explorers that I found on Drive Through RPG for aliens as a catch-all. It was interesting, but a lot of work, and I didn't do it. Uh, and robots, which could have been droids, but also didn't feel as interesting as Ada uh, as a technician. And also, uh, someone created an Explorers class for a motorcycle centaur. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's pretty great. I'm glad I got it. It amuses me. But I did not make any of you guys as a motorcycle centaur. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, I, was, I thought about it but I didn't. If one of your characters had died in the White Star, <laughs> I may have created you as a, as a motorcycle <laughs> centaur, but you were all, you're all survivable. So uh, I also am doing something a little different for this session in my prep. Previously, I had been using the Twin Stars of Kira, which is a supplement from the 90s for Westing Games D6 Star Wars. And I was using that as the container for adventures and, and place. But now, uh, we've had enough adventures to where I'm inspired by things your characters are doing. And so that is uh, the thrust of what we will be doing this time. But first, you guys have all made a level, which means that Phaeton has more meditations spells, and everyone else gets some more hit points. So, friends... Uh, if you could, please, uh, let's. what we're going to do is we're going to go around the horn, have you introduce yourself, introduce your character, just a brief little like sentence or two, and then you roll your d6 to see how many more hit points you have at third level. Let's go in the order of the character keeper from left to right, which means, Andesh, if you could go first, introduce yourself, tell us about your character, and roll that beautiful d6. Yeah, uh, hello, I'm Andesh. I use the he, him pronouns. I'm playing Maze Vogi, who is... Uh, an abrasive, uh, not very smart uh, criminal. Um, yeah, that's about all you need to know about her. Well, she she's got a, a hacker, a, a hot box, which is like a, a slicer computer thing. Uh, I noticed that she doesn't have the computer skill, which feels perfectly uh, correct for for her character. So let me. Oh, there's a lot of dice here. I will just roll a new one thing. It's 
1d6. This is the roll. I get a 2. A 2. That is not very high. I'm deleting all the other dice off the table so we can get nice and fresh. That that d6 is a 2, so you get to you get a total of 13 hit points. Awesome. Next up is Keith from uh Human Hand and Brain. Seared into your brain at this point. Uh, I'm Keith. I use the he, him pronouns, gamer, educator, and designer outside of Philadelphia. Uh, my stuff is sporadically on humanhandandbrain.com when I get around to updating it. I'm playing uh, Phaeton Rouge, a Jedi who, uh, I think I said it was for, from cleverness instead of cowardice, uh, <laughs> made himself <laughs> scarce during the dark times of, of the Jedi when, when Luke Skywalker was doing big, brave things. He was waiting, cat-like, ready on the side to to jump in when needed and never felt himself needed and now uh, wishes to atone for that inaction and is somehow trying to do so with this crew of reprobates. It's going great, everybody. Uh, missing a hand, because that's classic Star Wars, but has a combat implant to kind of uh, offset that a little bit and uh, almost got stabbed to death by little forest dwellers in his first appearance. So that pretty much classic OSR there. And let's see if I can't get myself some more hit points to make that less likely. And I don't see the one die that Rich saved. I deleted it. Oh, you deleted it out. Not okay. delete. So you can make a new one. All right. I'm getting a new one out here and let's roll this thing. Oh, it's a five. five. Oh, you are not. Uh, you are not. <laughs> You're not a big wimpy nerd, mage nerd now. You I'm a monster. I've got three spells and 14 hit points oh my gosh you're getting dangerous wake in your stormtrooper boots <laughs> next up mad j good morning i'm mad j uh game designer um i'm playing barrage uh clone trooper uh he's on a revenge mission um to find out who killed his brother jet who died in the first session so i'm leaning into all the osr tropes you killed my first character so we, we'll bring his family member along um love it all right okay. here's the rule here we go so when it drops on the table is that your role or yes you... when it drops okay. on the table uh right. and i think i'm green so you'll get another green die here in a minute yay green dies in a minute there it is. Oh no. Oh twos. Oh no. Oh no. No, oh, still you got 14 hit points. Same as the as the Jedi. You both are equally not as squishy as before, but you do have higher hit point or higher AC because of that reflect armor you now. I wear. know, I saw that. That's good stuff. I'll take a terrifyingly it. giant gun. Yes. Your your gun is so scary. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to use it. <laughs> uh, note. Because Explorers is more of a retro sci-fi, I mapped over the weapons as written, and the laser rifle, which is the blaster rifle the Barrage uses, uh, expends energy units to up the dice, and there's a cap. So for a blaster pistol, you can do between 1d6 to 3d6 based on how many EU you want to spend. Uh Barrage's laser rifle can do 1 to 5d6 damage. That is why we're talking about the terror that is Barrage when he shoots a dude. Uh, last but not least, Stephen, if you could introduce yourself, tell us about your character. Sure thing. Um, my name's Stephen. My pronouns are he, him. And um, today I'm playing Ada, which is a droid, AD-4. And uh, Ada has a drone um, that's a little flying probe droid looking thing called kr-0 or crow um ada is the backup pilot for the sh trident ship that we're in um whenever the first crew died um she uh she was activated in order to pilot the ship and that kind of stuff um ada is blind um so only sees through the ship's sensors and through crow the probe droid um and um, also needs to take uh, a Nepenthe, which is a droid oil every day, or it will uh, she will get disadvantage. Um, she can't really operate that well. Um, and she's techie and that kind of stuff. 
And let me roll my d6. I am blue. And where this hits the table, that'll be my hit points. Five. Okay. It's all twos and fives. All twos and fives. That's all we have on the d6. It's a d2, really. A two or a okay. five. I want to point something out. Like, I have a physique of five. Okay. I am horrible, but I have the most hit points. How did that happen? That is crazy. <laughs> That's great. I kind of like it. <clears throat> okay. So we... Oh, I just realized something. Um, oh, yes. Should I... Uh, does this system subtract one from the roll because I have such a low physique? It... Oh, that's a great question. I don't think it does, but let me double check. Okay, do, 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 uh, do, that's do. fine. I don't want to derail things. We can just go with that. Your physique bonus is added to the D6 you roll for hit points every level. Therefore, yes, it should be minus three. Okay. So you should be sitting at 14. Everyone's 14, except... Um, except well, that, that also means that if you have a bonus in physique, the other characters would go up. Yes, which means Barrage, you should be at 17 hit points. And everybody else is a zero. Flat. Thank you for that question. I had completely forgotten about it. So we pick up from the last session. If you remember, you guys were on the jungle planet of Cran. You had made a harried delivery of some Nova crystals and brought it to a large freighter to take off of planet. And as part of your payment, uh, Vanel, the head of security for Montandiev's limited mining company and ex-ISB agent inform Barrage of details <clears throat> on who killed Jet. She informed you, Barrage, or we'll, we'll drop into my bad Imperial voice. Uh, I regret to inform you that Jet was killed by a pirate group and his death was involving a group of pirates known as Telex Terrors over some Lexanite. Uh, Barrage would definitely know Lexanite is a very super duper illegal, uh, toxic, poisonous material. It is relatively well known in the Kira system. Lexanite is super dangerous. The leader of Telex Terrors is a man by the name of Kurd Telek. I have the coordinates for one of his bases, which I provide to you in recompense for your excellent work here. That would be fantastic. And I'm glad you're acknowledging that... Uh... My crew, we did excellent work. Yes, you did. Even though you were mean to me. <laughs> I hope they don't fire you. They shan't. I won't allow I it. appreciate this. Best of luck. Good hunting. And with that, she'll walk crisply away. So, uh, the... Location that you were provided in the coordinates are on a planet in the Kira system known as Rich tries to unhide a thing known as Lazarian Four. It is at Richesta find the details on it. So Lazarian 4 is within the Kira system. Uh, if you take a look at the Kira system map, you'll see, and I'll share screen so we're all looking at it. Uh, the Kira run is here. So the Kira system is right smack dab in the middle of the Perlibian trade route and the Inarch run. The Lazarian system is though, if you use compass directions, westernmost um, and its twin across is the Ropaji system. 
the Lazarian system, Lazarian 4, is where you were given the location of the uh, the base. And she even provided you these de details on the base itself. Uh, the details that you receive are that during the, during the reign of the Empire, uh, Telex Terrors had hit several Imperial vessels. This was five years ago. And they sent in a group to get all the details on the base, including the floor plans and security details. So it is a little out of date, but she expects that not little has changed, not much has changed. So uh, that is the information you guys have. You are flush with some cash. Uh, you cash. are welcome to go where and when you want we're going a little sandbox but i know barrage has a certain motivation so uh and i share all of this <clears throat> with the rest of the crew uh especially the lexanite angle um because my thought is um the rest of the crew they weren't on that job so um i mean ada was yeah, in so a closet on the ship <laughs> Right, right. Uh, so my question is, is does anyone does anyone know uh, that Jet was going to smuggle, or did you all know you were smuggling Lexanite? Because that's a big deal. I think, Maze, you were part of the conversation, but you ended up getting <clears throat> involved in something else. So I think you know the details of the mission, just so we can use a little bit of player knowledge because otherwise the idea of Jet sure. being a bad dude isn't really a thing I'm interested in exploring. Cool. Um, yeah, since I, I, I wasn't part of this session, so I don't... Uh, yeah. yeah, you guys were told you're moving some spice. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Yes, yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> and whatever, so... I was a part of the session, but not Ada. But basically, we were like, oh, yeah, all you have to do is go to this crazy planet, pick up some spies, tr go someplace else. You get a bunch of money. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. And we showed up, and there were some, like, six gangers in there. And they were all, oh, you were you were there. Yeah. There yeah. were six gangers in there, and uh, they picked them up, and uh, they they were actually checking the contents. And that's how we find out the contents were Lexanite. Not the spice. Not the spice. But this would be news to all of our characters, right? Like, right. oh, so our, our unit right. was set up. The only one. Them? So maybe yes, and that's what I was angling for. We were set up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we got to go take them out, right? I mean, that's. What, they, what is they... the plan? Um, it doesn't seem efficient to go after the people who were trying to steal the cargo from us. What is the reason for that? You think barrage? Yeah. No, you're right. They're they're hired hands like like we were. So I guess we're looking for the employer. I see. So this is an information mission. It could be. Um, unless, yeah, unless we know where that employer is, it's possible that these gangers, they knew it was Lex and I, they were looking for it. Um, they might get us a lead. So Telex Terrors were the group that attacked all the other PCs. And kill them, but they were not the employers of the PCs. Right. Okay. But they knew, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Rich, they knew what they were looking for when they got there. Yes. We were looking for spice. You guys were told, go get some spice. Right. You went to get the spice. The cartons were open, and these members, these gangers from Telex Terrors, knew it was Lexanite. They were double-checking it before they packed it up. They had movers, haulers in. Their intent was take this Lexanite right. somewhere else. <clears throat> and then everything got explosive. 
it it did. <laughs> there was a big crash. There was some like vehicle rulings, rundown, damage. Yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah. So unless we have a direct line to the employer, I think Mirage is thinking we can get to that employer through these gangers or something, and work it backwards. <clears throat> These, this gang may not be willing to provide us with the information we're looking for. Oh, somebody's going to talk. Somebody's going to be willing. Barrage can be very persuasive. All right. Also, not for nothing, I took Charm Person, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think and detect thoughts. We got this. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a stealth run, right? And we we grab them one or two z at a time, uh, and not a not an assault. I don't know how many folks are down in there. So maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe it's uh, uh, more more stealth than front door. The information that was provided to us indicates that there is a crew of 12 possibly so it could be 12 or less unless they have converted another room into quarters right so phaeton rouge uh rich the the ref I'm a ref in this game, guys. <laughs> Rish the ref looking at Lazarian 4 sees that one of the points of interest is an old Jedi outpost. What does Phaeton Rouge know about uh, this old Jedi outpost on Lazarian 4? I've lost my Lazarian 4. Did you... Uh... Oh, uh, it's it has no actual details. It's just a temporary oh, planet. Just... I just did a cool pick. Okay, it was just a pretty picture. I was going to fill in more details, and then I realized I did not. So, but there is a link to Lazarian Four on Wikipedia if you want to see the deets. I will throw that in. Bloop. <clears throat> sure, I'll grab something from there. Why not? Yes. Uh, gosh, does it? Mm, mm, I think it would be fun to connect it. Uh, somewhat personally, like I don't think I've been there, but um. I was hoping you would connect it personally. Yeah. My, my I know this master. isn't very OSR to like have yeah, you know, a sorry. story, but are, we're doing it. There are details irrespective to, to what I'm going to say. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think for a time, uh, my master was in charge of the temple. Ooh. Uh, the comings and goings and, and the maintenance of it uh, before I knew them. And I assume your your master was discharged during Order sixty six. Is that or later? Is that the verb we're using? Discharged, yeah, yeah. Killed, murdered, hunted down, transcended this physical plane. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> force ghosting it all over the place now. Like, ah, oh, shut up. Actually, now yeah. I'm imagining there was some force ghost guilting going on at some point. Like, <laughs> Phaeton, Phaeton, you're one of the few left. Come on, I'm in. I'm in retirement. No, what, I have to preserve the the traditions and the lineage of the Jedi. I can't can't risk it dying out from some foolish mission. Uh, Lazarian Four is part of Zinja's empire, so this is under imperial control. Uh, but it also has its own monarchy. So there is an imperial governor in charge. Lazarian IV has been friendly enough to Zinj's empire to keep hold of their own uh, government. So what's the plan? Um, is there a town hub, uh, a supply town? Yes. Nice. Remember, it's Star Wars. Lazaria City 
is the closest large town. It is a uh, the capital of the kingdom of Devit and the largest metropolis on the on the planet. It has about 40 million people inside. So as you can see, scale wise, you know, 40 million people. That's that's, that's sizable. <laughs> that's sizable. <laughs> Uh, maybe we recon town, see if we can find some of these gangers hanging out around town, and we snatch one or two of them up. Ooh, interesting. Bring them back to the ship. Have a little tea to teat. All right, so uh, we star wiped you guys arriving to Lazarian 4. Lazarian 4 is a temperate planet. Uh, and the terrain as you're coming in is uh, there's you pass over several forests. Uh, there is a mountain range not far from else uh, Lazarian or Lazaria City. You also see the the huge spires of the palace of the king. And um, yeah, there are some industrial starports that are on the outskirts of Lazaria city most of the manufacturing plants are set up outside of the city itself so there is actually a, a smoggy area to the south of Lazaria city um, you can easily get passage to land on Lazaria city starport but as this is you are in Zinja's empire uh, two of you should be really careful because you took these banes that you you wanted to carry forward, wanted by the Empire. And let me just say by name, Maze and Barrage, both of you are wanted by the Empire. FYI. So with that um, in mind, your, your plan is to try to find some spaceport and look around for some members of Telex terrors, the pirate gang? Yeah, my thought is uh, maybe they come out for supplies, uh, fun. Uh, maybe we're, we're checking out those kind of locations. I will keep uh, my armor helmet on, even if I don't wear the armor. I don't know what the, but I'm going to keep my helmet on. Uh, one, because I'm a clone, and two, because I'm a clone. So. Can you imagine when you run to other clones? They're like, Barrage, man, you're making us all look bad. <laughs> Wanted by the Empire. I just got hung. I had to give them my chain code. And then like, oh, you're the worst, Barrage. It's like Jet used to say. Anyway. Uh, cool. I think it would be interesting if we explore this saves system. <laughs> this whole thing where you make saves. Uh, so... Uh, I can call for saving throws for both actions. You can try to do something, or reactions means you avoid something. Um, in a save, you're going to roll a d20. Wow, hold on. Is it is it roll above? I mean, I would imagine so. Crap, hold on a second. I got to make sure I'm doing a saving throw right. I'm, I feel very dumb. I got excited about saves, and then... I put the rules in, but the rules are a little unclear. So I'm going to double check it. It will take only moments, I'm sure. Multi-classing. Oh, and there's a whole lot of stuff about equipment. That's not helpful. All right. Searching the document. All right. Saving throws. Two hit. Uh, saving throws. And, uh, rules. Roll a d20. Add the appropriate attribute bonus to the roll and try to equal to... Or beat the number listed on your class's skill table. But, uh, or the character advancement table for saving throws. Okay. That's that's not super helpful. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So we want to get high, right? Yes, you do want to roll high. It was Barrage's idea. Um, so I think, Barrage, you're going to make an intelligence save. Um, so you get to roll... D20 plus zero, because your intelligence bonus is zero, and your saving throw is a 13. That's And you get a 13 or better. So a D20. You got it! Fantastic! Awesome. 
So uh, you skulk around the Lazarian starport and you find a spacer bar. Um, let us... It's called uh, the beam, and the spacer bar is it's a fully automated bar. So the the drinks are super cheap because they don't have overhead of paying for human beings or their special needs, you know, like medical or all that stuff, retirement. Um, Ada. This fully automated bar, the beam, it serves Nepenthe, of course, for the staff. Of course. I think I, I head up to the yeah. staff corner where the, where it's being served, and yeah, sweet. I imagine that behind uh, the bar is an eight eight armed droid that just kind of moves back and forth on weird spider legs to serve all of the various spacers. Barrage, you come in. I mean, you've got to ask around, I would imagine. Uh, you were successful, but what's the kind of person that Barrage was looking for? Someone that was like a merc? Uh, someone that looked down on their luck that might sell out people for a few credits? Uh, maybe an entertainer or... Uh, wh how how did you find this information? What were, how did what was your approach? Uh, I think I'm looking for uh primarily uh a mercenary kind of ganger type. Um, if they're a crew, they they're probably tight knit, and if just a bunch of them, I think he's looking for that that kind of bravado that comes with. A bunch of dudes hanging out together doing bad things. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for that kind of type, uh, especially if we're in uh, the uh, cantina or, or the or the bar area, right? My mm -hmm. thought is eventually they're going to come out of that base in the town, and uh, maybe I can catch one or two of them out here. Now, if there's several groups operating like that, uh, but maybe I just we just luck out and. Um, we're yeah, I'm, I imagine days. there were maybe a couple of false starts, but right. uh, you circle around uh, the second time and you find a group of Klaatu Indians. So what are Klaatu Indians? They're on our Names and Species Helper. They were featured a lot in the last two seasons of Mandalorian. They're the dog face people. You may also recognize them from Return of the Jedi out on Tatooine. Um, and I'm a complete dork, uh, so all Klaatuidian names are uh, Star Warsy versions of dog names because that just makes me laugh. So yes, uh, Tucker and uh, and Jack uh, are the pair that you overheard them talking about. We need to get back. Hey man, we need to get back. Our shift's almost uh, coming up. And uh, you see that they're headed towards a land speeder. And uh, based off the coordinates that you received, you're pretty sure that these guys are part of uh, Telex terrors. So what do you do? Uh, I signal the rest of my crew and uh, I follow. I don't want to start fighting the bar. Just think of the cover it would be. <laughs> but I suppose we don't want to set up any any uh, red flags with the, the home base if we can help it. Right. So the plan is kind of wait for them to leave and trail them? Uh, I don't know. I'm winging it. I think Barrage is going to keep them from getting on the bikes. We're taking these two right here. Right? So I, right, I, I don't want them to get on the speeders. But if oh, it's not speeders. It's a, a land speeder. It's like a, a land speeder, brown yeah. single land speeder. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want them getting in the land speeder. Uh, I want to take them before before then, uh, but I don't want to do it in the bar 
because again, I'm also wanted. I'm trying to keep a low profile, and um, we're we're about to spike it a little bit. Is disabling a land speeder something that Maze would be good at? I mean, I think it's something that Ada would be good at mechanical wise. Yeah. Well, but... then we have to convince you not to be drinking Nepenthe right now. One hundred percent. That's right. <laughs> Well, I've got security. I think I could use that, probably. So I like the idea that maybe that's what we wanted Ada to be doing. Uh, and we're like, where's, where's Ada? Ah, maze, maze. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll do it. Nice. <clears throat> uh, sure, a security, which is based on your intelligence, um, which means that you... Right. You suck at it. No, you just need to roll a, tw a 12 or better because you have a minus one from intelligence. Uh, roll a d20, and if you roll a 12 or better, uh, you're able to disable the land speeder without being noticed. I Did I roll already? No? I, I, see a, I see a purple eight from a d20 there. Yeah, but I, it did show up here, so I don't think that was my roll. Oh, okay. Probably not, then. Uh, Barrage got a 14, so it didn't show up. Yeah. Maze yeah. Vogel got a, a 7. That's not 12 or higher. It is Ooh. not. It is not. <laughs> um, So I think Barrage yells at both of them. Hey. Hey, you two. Nice. So uh, let's let's set this. Let's Okay. Maze you crawl underneath because if you guys remember land speeders, they just continue to hover. Right? right. So you crawl underneath and you're working on it and you've, you've got a panel open and you've ripped a bunch of wires. You're pretty sure that it's good to go. Uh, but then you see a pair of boots scuff and someone is above you sniffing like, <laughs> And then they start to bend down, and you see this. I mean, they 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 look a lot to me like like pug guys, right? And he's got this pug face, and he's like, "What are you doing down there?" And then <laughs> barrage, and they're reaching for you, right, to like yank you out from under barrage. You're following these guys out. You see, there's a little bit of trouble, so uh, the two, um, uh. Clatuinians, you call them out, and, um, and now you're out in the sun, and there are a few ships, or not ships, but like speeders that are going by, but this is because it's a spaceport, right? So there's a, a relative amount of, of activity. And one of the Clatuinians is looking over at the speeder, and the other one turns to look at you, and you're wearing your helmet, uh, and I'm curious, Phaeton, did you follow Barrage when he took off after these guys? So are you there or no? Yeah, I feel like our original plan was Ada disables the uh, the, the speeder uh, and then Ada and Maze are kind of off to the side and we come up and say, looks like you folks are having trouble with your speeder. You should come with us. Uh, and then we just speared him off without a fuss. Um, but now two things have gone wrong. So I'm kind of hustling up behind Barrage and like, I guess we're winging it. Nice. So Phaeton, you you then are probably near enough to take an action when one of the Klaatuinians turns around, looks at you, uh, Barrage, and, and he's going to step two. It's like, what? You got a problem? <laughs> What do you do, Barrage? Uh, <clears throat> I say, yeah. Yeah, you're hired. Uh, I'm taking both of y'all. Let's go. You can shoot, right? They look to each other. Yeah. Yeah? What's your, what's your day rate? 50 cred. Uh, bargain for the two of us. You, you only uh, 80. Deal. Deal. You got your guns with you? Yeah, the other guy who was with him, like, he's just like, okay, I've got to follow the your lead on this <laughs> thing. Uh, Maze, this Klaatuinian, the one who's down by there, he's like reached out and they 
they're trying to grab you to pull you out from underneath. What do you do? Um, <laughs> you think they, got, they I get think, hold of your like plasticky cybernetic arm, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like kick him in the face and try to like roll away. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I think that's. That's just a straight up saving throw, right? You're trying to get out of the way. So that would be affected by your agility, which you're pretty good at. So you're yeah, going to yeah. need to roll a d20 plus one, trying to get a 13 or better. Cool. I'm rolling a d20. I uh, get a 20. Nice. <laughs> Automatic success. You are very <laughs> adroit as you kick him right in the face. You hear his little doggy nose break. His little Klaatuidian oh. nose breaks a little bit. And he, he starts blinking real hard because he's his eyes are misting up. And he falls back onto his butt. Uh, and you scramble out of the way. Uh, Phaeton, I think you catch that. That's the, the coolest move you've ever seen Maze pull off, honestly. Um. Yeah. What do you do, Phaeton? How, how does um the one that Barrage was talking to react? It uh, seems like they were kind of two on two different wavelengths, right? Like one's accepting a job and and one's seeing sabotage mm-hmm. and getting kicked in the face. Yes, Coco. What are you doing? This 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 girl just kicked me in the nose. And he's oh, reaching okay. for his blaster pistol. Uh, he's going to fire off a shot at Maze if you don't do something. Yeah, I, hmm. I didn't want to do this already, but yeah, let's let's use the resources. <laughs> I'm going to go with a uh, charm person on on the one that's been kicked in the face. Mind trick. Yeah. Awesome, amazing. All right, so let's remind ourselves on the explorer's rules, which are really these. Uh, White star <laughs> rules for charm person. This meditation definitely will affect this one. It's within 120 feet for sure. Uh, saving throw allowed to resist. Um, otherwise, he falls under the character's influence. Uh, so I'll give him a saving throw, but it's it's not great. He's not a very savvy person. I'm going to go with blue for me. No, we got somebody else with blue, so I'll go green. And here comes my D twenty green. What what he, when it hits, it is rolled. Uh, he is going to need a sixteen or better. Oh! <laughs> Holy crap! I did not expect that to happen. Uh, sweet. So, uh, Coco. Um. Oh, so I'm over here trying to convince him that he just saw like a. Uh, fox or something running around under there rather than than maze uh and yeah nice uh don't worry about the local fauna he coco blinks a couple times says no 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 some street rat and he, he's gonna fire off a shot at maze maze uh i will be rolling that same d20 your ac maze is a 13. And he fires wildly and misses you by a lot. It's like a big hole opens up in the wall. Uh, not even close to your head, really. You can take off and get completely out of dodge here at Maze, if you like. Yeah, I, I like dart into an alley somewhere and, and uh, scramble over a fence and, and just, uh, yeah, get out of there. Nice. Uh, we cut inside the beam bar where Ada, you have been refilling on Nepenthe and the, I think this, the eight armed kind of spider droid bartender is, takes up and says, mm, there appears to be a security incident just outside of the beam bar informing Imperials. I kind of look up and I say, yeah, you know, I'm like, I look up, I look outside and I'm like, oh yeah. Um, I grab the the vial that's left of Nepenthe and mm-hmm. say, I will contact the Imperials. Um, thank you very much. And I head out, right? And as I walk out the door, you know, we see blaster fire and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, I'm like, 
whoops. And I kind of, you know, put the little thing inside my carapace, the little vial inside my carapace for safekeeping. And uh, I'm like, I think I, I kind of shuffle up on where all the action's taking place. And I say, you know, I get up behind Barrage. I think Barrage was talking to them at first and hasn't actually laid down fire. And I shuffle up behind uh, Barrage and I say, um, Imperials may have been called. We might want to leave the area quickly. Okay. I want to leave the area quickly. <laughs> Uh, these these two Klaatuidians, they're like, Coco, stop shooting. We got a job. This is good money. No, it is good money. Uh, let's take your speeder to my ship because the Imperials are coming. We don't need to be around here for that. Yeah. So uh, do you get in the, the speeder with them? Because they're all piling in like they're oh, yeah, no, I'm, getting I'm into the in general with, as They're hopping yeah. in, yes. One of them does the like one leg up and then slides in the side thing, and the other one dives in the back. And uh, yeah, Coco says, "I can't drive. I can't drive. My nose is broken." Uh, so Coco will be getting in the back. And uh, yeah, what is Phaeton doing? It's a so four seater. How did we get here? I'm sure. I'm sure I drove a speeder of our own, or we had individual sure. speeders. It, it'd make more sense if. We had one speeder on the ship, so I think I, I brought Phaeton and Maze. Okay, uh, and who's in the Klaatuanian speeder? I am. Barrage and three Klaatuanians. Oh. oh, there's three Klaatuanians. Oh wow, yeah. I thought there was two too. All right. You hired two. They were the two coming out of the bar. There oh, was one gotcha. outside. Gotcha. Who All right. Ran into Maze and shot at Maze. All right. And. Wow. Gotcha. Sorry, I was unclear, but there are three. Okay. Uh, yeah, then I'll pop in our speeder and I think um, go a bit slower, assuming I know about the uh, background of our friends that really don't want to run into the Empire. Although, actually, do we have... It's Ada and Barrage that don't want the Empire around, right? Aww. Right. Okay. <clears throat> no, it's Maze and Maze. Uh, Maze. You're right, it's oh, Maze. Sorry. sorry. I shouldn't have said yes. You're right. It is. It is. Uh... And I don't know where Maze is because she is scarpered off after not being mistaken for a fox. It's true. Uh, She's so fox like. Um, very vulpine, but it didn't work. Didn't work out. So I feel like uh, Ada and I can drive slowly just in case the Empire wants to catch up with anyone. It's less bad if they catch up with us. Uh, and Barrage is is hauling tail. Uh towards the ship and we don't know where Maze is just like I hope she's taking care of herself I think Maze you like dove down an, uh, an alleyway yeah. after getting shot at and, and uh, I'm absolutely getting back to the ship where, and uh, I don't know if they know that but, but that's uh, that's where I'm going nice uh, so yeah Barrage you're riding with these Klaatuinians and one of them reaches in and like pulls out uh, some death sticks and they're passing death sticks around. Um, what's what's Bar does Baraj just pal around with them? Is he doing oh, yeah. the like I'm in charge thing or? Yeah, no, I pal around. But if yeah, uh, if it's in question, I'm, I'm in charge. Yes. OK. You're wait They don't know you're a clone. They just know you're some guy who's trying to hire people. Yeah, yeah. And if they ask, it's you know, it's it's a hit job. Um, there's some uh, not street rats, but not quite mercenaries, and they're getting in the way. And I could use some extra muscle. That's what the job is. Should be quick. Tucker, who's the talker who immediately took the job, he starts listing out: Is it so and so? Is it so? He lists out like four different gang names. Uh, right, one right. of them was one of the gangers you thought maybe could have been uh, Telus Terrors. Uh, no, yeah, I will lean into one of the names he throws out there. Oh, and the other, and uh, Jack's like, oh yeah, of course, of course, yeah, we 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 don't probably we'll rub some of those guys out, and we're just in for supplies and fun. That's it. Which yeah. one's yours? Which one of these? They're like 
zipping along. Yeah, and I, yeah, I pointed out. I, I give him directions. Uh... Like, oh man, this thing's ancient. Does it even actually fly? Ha 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 ha. And uh, in the back, Coco says, "Do you have like back to gel in there? Cause my nose." Oh yeah, no, we can fix that in there. We got a droid that'll fix you right up. Uh, cool. So we cut to but, Phaeton but and I'm Ada. taking that out of your cut. They laugh, and uh, I could not laugh too. Cut. That's like okay. Take it out of that plastic arm, girl. Uh, so, yeah. What was up with that guy saying he was a fox? What's he smoking? I want some of that. Ha 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 ha. Good. So they will pull up the speeder, and I assume Phaeton and uh, Ada, you guys are hanging back a little bit, letting this play out, but ready to to come up and back them up. Ada, do you do you sit tight and send Crow out, or do you keep Crow nearby? I think I need to have Crow nearby. Um, to help me, I think I'm driving. So to help me drive and make sure I don't run into anything, I think Crow needs to be right there with the speeder. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, and then Maze, they took the speeder. I don't. Im- I mean, you could hoof ho- ho- it if you want, or you could steal a you know speeder bike or something if if you feel crazy. Um... I think I do something like uh, jump up on the back of a of a speeder bus or something like that, uh, and just, like hitch a ride. Uh, that's that's the kind of thing I'm used to doing. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I like that. Like no roll. That just that just happens. That's amusing enough to me. It, uh, cool. So you catch up just a few moments after barrage. Um, Coco's really interested in going in and gets him back to he keeps like he's, he's I'm not crying. It's, it's uh you know it's just it, it missed something. Something in my eye. Uh then Tucker and, and Jack are making fun of him and shove him up the walkway as you guys are heading up into the ship. Nice. Nice. Uh at the yeah, at the top of the walk, uh, I'm assuming there's uh, controls where I can close the ramp. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not trying to lock everybody out, but I don't want these guys to get out. I imagine that you guys know, like there are airlocks. There's other ways to get into the ship. Right. So I so. do that. I, yeah, I, I close the ramp door. I think there's a moment as as the gang, like <laughs> you know, gangway is closing, where Tucker looks back. But he lets it go. And they walk into the Trident. So I can't help myself. I'm going to share screens oh, no. just so yeah, we can yeah. kind of orient ourselves. So I'm trying to remember where the gangway is. I think it's over like Porton. Let's see, 13. Those are escape pods. So no. And that's the middle. So is it coming in the back? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, it's sure. all right. Freight, it might be the back. Freight elevator, freight loading pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the back. So basically, there is a gangway here. So you came in right beneath the engines, and then the gangway comes up. And so now they're up in this area where there are six. There's a couple of maintenance access and storage spaces. There's a central walkway. There's like a hub to everything else. And... They're looking around. Uh, so this is like the engineering area. Uh, Ada being the pilot, Maze being the security expert, Phaeton being the Jedi. I don't know <laughs> if anyone <laughs> has like made this place their home. So right. it probably looks relatively standard. You got the sublight engine. The main thrusters are all accessible here. Uh, Jack looks around like he seems the most familiar. The other guys, they're not paying any kind of attention, but Jack seems to like clock things that are going on here. It's vis-a-vis like he's been in this kind of ship before. 
what's the plan here, Barrage? Just three on one. They do have blaster pistols. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, uh, for transparency, Jay does not have a plan. So this is amazing. Um, right. I'm hoping that my teammates are coming to back me up pretty quick. Um. Okay, so you got to stall then. Let's see how well you stall. Um. <laughs> And I'm thinking it's two on one because one of them can't really see and breathe right now. It's true. It's it's like two and a half on one. That's right, two and a half. I'll get. Yeah, I'm good with that. Two and a half on one. All right. Yeah, we've um, got a presence save here. Could be a okay. possible way of you buying some time. Uh, your presence like is that. flat, so you're going to need a 13 or better on that. All right. All right. Here it is. Ooh, no dice. No dice. It's oh, a seven. Man. Yeah, a seven. Okay, so that's a fail. It's time for plan B. It is time for plan B. So I think what happens here is that they come in and Coco is insisting on getting some Bacta. Uh, I imagine you you stall them a little bit there, heading over to. Just taking a look, uh, because I had actually where was the area? Shield gen, power core, refresher shower, bonk, fresh water tanks. I swear there was a broken back to tank. Yeah, fifty one. So, uh, kind of bring them into the central area here. This is where you guys would have your medical equipment storage. You got a computer access station. Um, and then broke a couple broken back to tanks. Oh, nice. Um, All right. Yeah, they just need servicing. They're not like irreparable. You just need to send some credits on it, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, also your weapons locker. So you're in there, three of them uh are checking it out. And I think the the fail is that Jack, who's the one who knows, this is like You know, I think maybe we're just going to take this ship. And he starts to reach for the weapons locker to, like, open it up. I imagine it's lock locked, so he'll have to right, do right. something. And one right. of the other guys is pulling out a blaster pistol, like, oh, we okay, we're doing this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Coco's like, guys, wait, wait. And he's trying to get the... the nice. So let's cut outside to Phaeton, Ada, Maze. You join up with them as you hop off of the uh, bus. So what's the plan, Ada, Maze, or Phaeton here to get inside? I, I mean, is it difficult for us to get inside? Like, no, I just give okay. give me a. a is it, are you going to come in from up the top? You're trying to climb in through one of the escape or the escape pods. Well, as far as we know, things are fine in there. That's true. Uh, you just take your time. You just leave Barrage there. Well, I, I guess was it's... thinking. I was thinking we would just lower the the uh, gangplank that you know the normal yeah. entrance. Yeah, because I didn't lock tell, it. I just closed it. Yeah, we tell Maze just stay outside, stay out of sight until you know until we call for you, and um, or sneak in if you want. Right, just don't don't get seen because they know who you are. And, and Barrage, just, I, I just say we walk right on in. Barrage hasn't sent us a signal or anything. Like, I mean, it seems like things have just started to go pear shaped. So yeah. All right. Then, I mean, there's, there's no reason not to, right? Okay. Just, just to restate, you're just going to drop the gangplank, which is loud and noisy as if you're a regular crew coming back to the ship type deal. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so yeah, the Coco is trying to get back to on his nose and fix stuff up. Jack has declared, yeah, we're just going to take the ship from you, buddy. Sorry. Um, and Tucker is the one who's drawn out his blaster pistol. That's when the gangplank starts to go down and they all see that's that something's going on. And, I think Tucker's just going to rush you and try to shove you down using the gun in your face as his threaten. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
uh, I want to pull my sword, right? Uh, and we're just going to do this right here. Okay. I think it is time for us to go to combat rules. Uh, this is going to be... This is going to be wild. Okay. So, determining an initiative. The beginning of each new combat round, each side rolls an initiative on a D6. I'll roll my D6. I'm rolling a green D6. I'm re-rolling the two that's already out there. And I got a two. Uh, Barrage, go ahead and roll initiative. Woof. Go first. Uh, so <clears throat> in the uh, in the methodology, uh, it's determined initiative. The party with the highest initiative acts first, moving and attacking, and results occur. Then then I go. So you wanna you wanna sword somebody? That sounds awesome. Yeah, my assumption is we're. Uh, I mean, I have my heavy laser rifle on me, and that That's feels kind of big for the space. Yeah. So I think it's in uh, the armory that uh, Tucker's trying to open up. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I will use my sonic sword. Uh, I do not get my super bonus on it, but that's fine. I am getting a plus one. One d twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, their ACs are uh, eleven. Okay. Uh, and this is—is uh, is it Tucker that closed with closed with me with his blaster? Uh, yes, it is. You are fighting Tucker. Gotcha. And there it is. Woo! Look at that. Woo! Squeaked by and yes. got it. That's great. Yes. So I think I bust him in the face with the hilt, and I say. Uh, sure, you can have this ship. Just let me get my stuff. Oh man, you just bust him in the face. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the Sonic Sword is one d six plus three. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if there are any stat bonuses on top of that. Uh, yes. If you have a physique bonus, you can add uh to hit and damage melee. So. Okay. So it's effectively a D6 plus four for you. All right. Here's the D6. Ooh. That's nine. <clears throat> yeah, that's he is he is in a world of pain. Uh that is more than half his hit points. You still want this ship? <laughs> Uh yeah, Tucker is Tucker's not liking that. Um Coco. Yeah, Coco's at this point probably just switching actions and trying to grab out his blaster pistol and um and Jack is is basically gonna blast open your armory thinking there's bigger weapons in there. Uh Phaeton, Ada, and Maze, uh you hear a blaster. Uh, sound of blaster and the definite sounds of combat. Uh, wh what do you wish to do? I mean, then I'm yeah, then I'm dropping into a run I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> things have not gone well, and I think the time is gone for stealth. So the the lightsaber's coming out. Nice, cool. So I think you guys can come in in the next round. We're going to do one more round of barrage dealing with. Uh, a group of Klatuinians who do not work very well together. <clears throat> so we will roll forward because we already have our initiative for that first round. We just roll forward to the next round. Although, does it say to do it every round? Double check, double check, double check. Determine the beginning of an each each new combat round. So we got to roll again. All oh, right. Wow. We're just doing it. We're doing it. Rules is written as much as I can. I got a five. And it's just a straight D6? It is. Oof, I got a four. Okay. Uh, they go first. So um, I think you're going to get shot. Uh, not by Tucker, who at this point is thinking he's going to get the hell out of here. Um, but by, of all people, Coco. Uh, so Coco's actually switched 
gave up that whole round and now is ready to go and uh, needs a 15 or better. So we'll see how that goes. I don't anticipate much success. Come on. Oh, man, come on. Okay. Not clicking correctly. That is an eight. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that is a miss. That is a missy miss. Oh, Coco. I was going to kill you last. Man, Coco's like, eyes wide there. <laughs> Look at the tears running down. I Look liked you. Tears. Oh, man. Coco. Coco was trying to like support his buddies. Um, and I think in this round, t um, Jack has opened up and he's pulling out your blaster rifle. Uh, he's planning on turning it and firing at you. And uh, Tucker's Tucker's trying to be feet. He's trying to shove it, shove his way past you and just get out. Uh, what do you do, Barrage? I let Tucker go because I heard the ramp drop. So I'll let, you know, there he's about to run into some trouble. So I'm not worried about him. Uh, man. I go hit Coco with my sonic sword. Yeah, I go after Okay. Coco. All right. Coco has an AC of 11. You are rolling a D20. You get to add your physique bonus because this is a melee thing. So you're rolling D20 plus, plus two. Uh, with the basic hit bonus? Or is that... Yes, it is, it is plus two. Your basic hit bonus is just from being soldier. So yes. Okay. Third level soldier. All right, here we go. Oh, no. That's only a six. I must have oh, really liked Coco. You must have. You just feel bad trying to kill little Coco. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of some of these dice because we have a lot of dice on this board. So, yeah, that is that is a bad missy miss. There's your there's your ugly. Horrible miss. So. Uh, right, sweet. We'll go first next round. You, you will see. Um, because maybe you won't. Uh, cool. Let's roll a d6 uh, for initiative. Now, Phaeton um, and Ada and Maze. At the beginning of this round, you can move past Tucker if you want, but a Klatuidian with a blaster pistol uh, is limping his way. Like he's hurt. He's got. He's, he's bleeding bad, and he's making his way towards you guys. Most of the fight's out of him, but you can. I mean, he's got a gun, so you can deal with that, or you can move past him to get into the room where you see, you hear barrage in a fight. Is the initiative per person, or is it for It's for the group. So let's okay. go ahead and roll. Uh, I'm going to roll my initiative, and then one of you guys, whoever wants to be the caller or the initiative person, can roll a d6. I got a four. I'll go ahead and roll it. I will roll this. Uh, pink pipped. Also a four. four. What now, oh. Rich? I know. There's no rules for this. They didn't anticipate well, you know, this you would know, ever the, happen. The PCs always get the breaks, right? Um, it's always our favor, no. right? The one in six chance of this happening. There's not a rule for it. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> there's no rule for it. No, there is a rule for it. I just didn't actually stick it into the cheat sheet because I I'm dumb. I don't know, but I remember it. So let I remember seeing it. I'm going to grab it real quick. I believe it is simultaneous. All right. Determine initiative. Uh, referees. Initiative rolls. Result in a tie. When this happens, both sides are considered to be acting simultaneous. So, yep, there you go. Uh, the ref may handle this in any way that he chooses. Um, with one caveat, the damage inflicted by combatants during simultaneous initiative is inflicted even if one of the combatants dies during the round. That is deadly. Uh, so, yeah, you I like it. Baraj, just so you're uh, so we're clear, if you get hit by um, Jack, 
he's going to expend all the energy units he can. He's going for the 5d6 damage. Um, but I am going to give him some trouble in trying to fire indoors when you're like right up in his face. That just doesn't make sense that a blaster rifle make is is easily utilized in a melee. Uh, so it's simultaneous action. Yeah, it's a big one. Uh, so poor Coco is going to try to shoot you, Barrage. And uh, uh, Jack is also going to try to shoot you. And Tucker is going to try to run for the ramp and get away. Those are those are the things he's trying to they these guys are trying to do. Uh Ada, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna step in an, into an alcove away from all the fighting, and I'm gonna shut all the doors and lock the place down. So I yes. think this is not just an external ramp, but this is also internal doors, right? So you have to have a code from the crew in order to get past these doors. And basically it's you, you know to get from section to section. Okay. Just so we're on the same page for that action, I'm going to show the picture real quick. I imagine these doors are easily operable to be shut. Are you planning on shutting Barrage inside with two Klaatuinians? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I think my take is that we basically have to shut all the doors to keep people from leaving. So, yes. Okay. Ada is shutting the doors, Phaeton. You see this door shutting. Do you want to try to rush inside, or do you want to deal with uh, the other Klaatuini who's trying to escape? All right, that was my original plan, uh, was, to, was to knock that guy out, since I know we have to question him. But I think if the doors are closing, then yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to have barrage be locked in there i mean uh, is it a you're locked in here with me situation i don't know but we we better get in there this mad jay it seems like that that's how barrage would see the situation so but Phaeton, it's also you try- osr so anyone can try at any time so i'm gonna barrage doesn't here. know it's osr yeah <laughs> barrage! Barrage is, barrage is playing like a pbta game. game it's not a story game <laughs> you are not the star of the story you are just a, a participant cool. barrage doesn't know that chet didn't know that either <laughs> Cool. Uh, uh, so, I hmm? tried to deal with the one who's, oh, who's okay. Cool. To do it. I, I was getting ready to ask you, Andesh. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, All yeah, right. So, so your your plan is to like knock him down, uh, like trip him and and put the blaster in his face. Sweet. Yeah. Just go ahead and give me a um. Yeah, I think you got to knock him down because his plan is to like just keep running. So we'll give you uh his his AC at this point no. It's just straight up a 10. Uh, you've got a basic hit bonus of plus one. So you'll need to get a 10 or better to knock him down. Phaeton, uh, give me a save affected by your uh, agility. Oh, it's a flat. Uh, just give me a save to see if you can get through the door. Otherwise, you're on the other side of the door and it shuts him in your face because eight is so efficient. Uh, so for the save, we roll under the spot. Over. Roll high. Oh, we want to. So yeah. I would have a worse chance of saving intelligence because my intelligence is higher. No, that int bonus is just stat bonus. I, I. You are no, that is a great. Oh, question. I'm just rolling save. Okay, sorry. I thought it was based on the stat. No. So I'm rolling over a thirteen with no bonuses. Correct. Got it. Yeah, you're rolling against the saving throw value of thirteen. All right. Is that uh, green one with the Ada 20 cider? Uh, y- yes. You know what? If we're not sure, I'm just going to put one out. No, it is. It is. Oh, I was right. rolling earlier. I will That's roll fine. this pink one here. Okay. Ooh, seven. Oh, man. The door shuts. And you know, you know, you would get hurt by it if you go any further and it shuts in your face. Uh, so you're trapped on the other side. Ada, let's have your two hit bonus uh, to try to knock down poor, poor Tucker. It's running away. You That's mean me, Maze? Right? You're right, Maze. Thank you. Sorry about that. So I'll also re-roll the pink die because it's been so good to us so far. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good idea. Yeah, that's an that was pretty consistent. Is this a D? I'm just double checking. I'm pulling the D20 onto. The... Yeah, it looks just like that one. 
Okay, so it is a D twenty. We've we verified it's a D twenty. <laughs> verified. <laughs> just to just to be clear here, I have a basic hit bonus of plus one. I have my combat implant because no, both of I those figured. Count, I sorry, your your basic hit bonus for your for a scout is actually still a zero at, at oh third okay, level. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, added yeah. in. I I tried to indicate that there with the the up thing. Sorry, that's oh, unclear. Oh oh sorry, I I missed that. Yeah yeah yeah. Cool, excellent, great. Everything's great. Yeah. So no. yeah, I uh, I flub it. Uh, does he try to shoot me, or or what's what's he doing? I think he's gonna keep running. That's what I declared. Now he's got to make a save to get past the doors as well. His save is not great. Uh, he needs to roll above a fourteen. Here we go, rolling a d twenty, which we've confirmed is a d twenty. I have retold two of them, but I meant to reroll that one, so it was an eight. And anyway, that was a failure as well. Uh, so I think. I, I I think he gets like partially through the door and the door closes and, and I don't think it cuts his arm off or anything, but he's trying to for, wedge his way out, but it breaks his arm and he starts howling in pain because uh, he was trying to get out the ramp and the ramp closes on him. And he thought, oh, well, I'll just put my arm in like an elevator and open it and it just crunch and we hear the, uh, you know, the pistons grinding as he's he's now screaming like ah ah so uh oh, back good. inside with barrage and uh and tucker and sorry that was tucker that did that so it's coco and jack in there with you barrage uh, neither of them have been harmed one of them has a blaster rifle what do you wish to do can they hear uh tucker howling Mm-hmm. Good, 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 good. Uh, no, I hit Coco. Okay. I hit Coco. Uh, Sonic Sword. Uh, but I tell him you should give it up. They're already out there killing your other buddy. You hear him? Yeah, he's howling in pain. Dude. You hear that? Coco's scared. Coco is scared. <laughs> Coco's All whimpering right. as you close on him with that sonic sword. Fibro sword. Plus two. Plus two. Uh, he's an 11. You got him. Uh, roll some damage. This this could be bad for Coco. I hope it is. I hope it is. Uh, 1d6. There's the three. Plus the what? Um, plus three, plus yep. four. Plus four, because you're, yep. That is... So seven, yeah. Seven, yeah, that... Uh, you, I think... Sorry I'm biting on your stuff, Phaeton, but it's a Star Wars thing. I think I think he raises an arm up to try to defend himself, <laughs> and you go like, Take it out clean, man. Just vibrates through and slices him across part of his chest. And he, the camera focuses on half of his Klaatuinian arms. He squeals in pain and falls to the deck. I got uh, a guy for that. Oh, good. That's good. Uh, now it is time to see if, uh, and I'm, I'm doing this out in the open. Uh, we do need a 15, right? Yep. I'm 15. like, don't miss. You're next. Don't miss. Tucker is going to unload this blaster rifle. He's he's basically... Uh, here we go. Oh, snap. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, <So>, jeez. <laughs> 20 is automatic hit. It inflicts double damage. All right, let me have it. So, uh, let's quick pull the table. When you guys read double damage on dice damage, do you think it means you roll your dice and you double that number? Or you roll double the number of dice. I mean, my, I my think instinct it's dice, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, usually it doesn't matter. Um, I would say make it the easiest and the quickest. Yeah. So that's probably right. rolling your dice and then doubling it. And doubling it, yeah. 
All right, I'm rolling 5d6. It's about to drop in. Here we go. Uh, that is 4 and 3 and 4 and 3. So that's 7 and 7, 14, 19. Yeah. yeah. Times. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's 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 more hit points than you have. Uh, so uh, 17. That's it's true. Um, and that is 7, 4, 19 times 2. But. But per the explorer's rules, when you lose all your hit points, you take a critical hit. So you're going to immediately roll 1d6 plus your physique modifier and refer to the critical hit table. All further damage while zero. Okay, so I think this is like when you get down. To... Fuck it. I just want to see it. So we're going to say that you this, this is a critical hit. Uh, roll me a d6. Plus one. Uh, plus one for your physique, yes. I max that out, baby. All right, adrenaline search. You gain one d six hit points. At the end of the combat, <laughs> the adrenaline drains away, HP are reduced to zero, and you lose consciousness consciousness for one d six plus ten minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this is amazing. Roll me another d six. How many d? This is great. That is this ridiculous. Is is ridiculous. Roll me a D6, a three. Really? Okay. So you get shot in the I guess in the back. In the right? back, yes. And I, I'm gonna say that it does it pass through and hit, hit Coco. I think Coco's out of the fight at this point. Uh and it seems almost punitive for you guys to for me to arbitrarily kill the NPCs that you were trying to um to capture at least one of, but yeah, he whoa, 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 whoa. he hits you, barrage, and something about the the combat training kicks in. You should go down. Um, he thinks you're down at this point, uh, but you have an adrenaline surge, and he's going over and tra- he's ripping at he Jack is ripping at the console to try to slice open the door. At this point. Um, let's cut to Phaeton Rouge. So Coco um, has his arm stuck in the gangplank thing and is screaming, trying to pry it open or something. Um, Tucker. That's Tucker. No, it's Co- no, Sorry. It is Tucker. Thank you. Why did I say? Tucker is screaming, arm broken, obviously, trying to free himself from the, the door that's closing on his arm. What do you do? They don't. Um, what do I know about what's going on in the broken back to room at this point? Do you, do you hear a bunch of blaster rifle noise? <laughs> you hear <laughs> my <laughs> rifle <laughs> at, at this point, yeah. right? But as far yeah, barrage as barrage is rifle, that's true. That could be barrage wiping the floor with those guys rather than being victimized with his own rifle. That's true. It could. To- it feels like <laughs> it's it's based on your history. In fact- in fact, you hear a Clatoonian screaming, right? Cause... Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And Barrage not making any sound. Mm-hmm. That's oh, probably going fine in there, then. Okay. As far as I can tell. Um, <laughs> so we've got Tucker, arm stuck, uh, screaming. Maze. Where, where's Maze? Yeah, I think Maze tripped him. No, I failed to the... trip him, so he oh, was he's trying to trip. Him. So I'm still Nearby. outside, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, you're outside, and Ada had closed all the doors, um, so I don't know what she's up to, but I know we got to interrogate one of these folks. Mm-hmm. How how wrecked is his arm? Uh, piece, he will need a cybernetic replacement. Oh, okay. Likely. Then I'll just cut it through for him. Uh, okay. You know, it's a lightsaber. It cauterizes it. That's good. Good news for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's going to pass out from the pain. Like, that's just. Oh, all right. Done. Well, then I won't yeah. say my witty line to him because I don't. Oh, you can it. say it. See, it's <laughs> like before he passes out, he looks up at you and. Well, then I tell him, I got a guy for that. <laughs> <laughs> As he can see the lightsabers held in my cybernet again. <laughs> and we'll, we'll deal with him getting the information from him later as he's certainly grateful for this triage that I've just performed for him. 
Sweet. So, Free charge. Um, inside the room of the broken back to tanks and broken barrage um, is Coco, who is down at this point, still alive. Uh, didn't take it nearly as bad as Barrage did. The should be dead Barrage, um, and Jack, who is currently trying about to, to do a roll off with Ada to uh, slice open the door. Barrage, what do you wish to do? Well, I'm a killer's fool. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. One, you didn't finish the job. I told you don't miss, and you didn't make sure I was dead. Now I'm mad because I feel like I'm unimportant. Now you realize what kind of game you're actually in. <laughs> it's not PBTA. Nope. All right. Um, I, I think you're pretty noticeable as you struggle your way to your feet. So I'm going to give him his full AC bonus. Oh, we should. Mm-hmm. Should we do? Should we do? Yeah, we got to do. We got to do initiative. initiative. Roll, roll me yeah. D6. Every round. I rolled a pitiful two. Come on, man. You can do better. You can beat a two. Six. The dice was not smell death him. in the air. Somebody not going to walk away from this. So it was what all fun and games until he pulled my rifle out. He did pull your rifle out. Oh, by the way, we need to um say that now there's there's like... 95. Because he burned one for D6 right. and he burned five of those. Right. All right. Wait, what are you, Sonic Sword again? Yeah, I'm going to finish him off with my Sonic Sword. Okay. Um, You got a base hit bonus plus one and you're doing melee, so it's plus two. His armor class is an 11. Good luck. It's a 79. Yes. Roll some good damage here. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. Nine points. Nine points. Uh, yeah, that's that's going to hurt, hurt bad. And I think you're up in his face. Yes. The idea of him using that as a blaster rifle does not make yes. sense. He's going to use it like a club. Um, so here we go. He is nearly dead. But still alive and weakly tries to snap you in the face, and I think he hits your helmet. But you don't care. You're wearing a freaking I think helmet. It comes off, right? Ooh. So you can see. Yeah, I think it comes off. You're pissed off looking uh, clone, clone yeah. and uh, he sees there's a moment of recognition, a clone warrior. Ugh. So he's here's the next initiative round. This dice table is littered with all the dice that Matt J's rolled. It's crazy. I'm sorry. It's okay. Did did we get everybody else in that round? Um, no, we did not. Uh, but Phaeton cut off a guy's arm. Ada, what are you doing once you shut down all the doors? Is there anything you'd like to do? Um, so I think once I shut down the doors, I hear the screaming. I I think we want to collect everyone. I ask Phaeton, you know, what's going on? And I, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm blind. The only thing I can see from is the ship, right? Mm-hmm. And crow, right? So I know what's going on inside that room. You totally do, right? Because the ship sensors would know what was going on. For sure. Yes. So I think I tell, I think I, I think I tell Phaeton, we've got to get in there and help him. Um, he just got shot. We need to help Barrage. He just got shot, and I open just that door. Nice. It's also straightforward. <laughs> just like that. This is great. Just open the door when the door needs to be open. Uh, so I think Maze and Phaeton, you hear that information from Ada. What do you like to do? Well, the door's open. Door uh, opens. Who, who's alive? Hey. Who's standing? What's happening? You got, you got one Klaatu Indian who is like right up on Barrage trying to hit him with his own rifle. Uh, you've got another um, Klaatu Indian who is like crawling away and trying to hide behind the back, one of the broken back of the tanks. <laughs> Coco's had the worst day. Uh, worst so day I'm so ever. worried about Coco. 
uh, do I feel like I could close the distance and uh, You're a Jedi. hand, a hand yes. attack? Okay. You're a Jedi, um, yes. But, oof. I mean, I guess you can I'm, use your martial arts if you don't want to lightsaber up people. Like not not quite so close to to barrage, um, with these dice. So I think yeah, I want to martial arts some this guy. Okay, you get two attacks per round with fists and feet, because you're a third level. Yeah, I do. Uh, so I think I'm going to come flying in and do a jump kick with this guy oh, that's so, so whacking so... a barrage in the head. Um, <laughs> so I roll a d20. You roll 2d20, two attacks. Oh, because it's the two attacks, okay. Yeah, 11 is what you need to be. I'm trying to click on your shared screen. That's not going to happen. But yeah, that's not going to help you. <laughs> I was doing that early. I'm like, what's wrong with my dice? We'll never roll dice that way. You will just always be trying. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take these two green ones then, and I will roll both of them. All right. And they will roll very differently, a 19 and a 2. <laughs> okay. Uh, your damage from martial arts is a D3 plus 2. That a, can I roll a D three? No, I just roll it. You can um, type in D one D three at the top, I think. Yeah. But if not, we can always roll a D six and cut in half. That dice added, but I didn't see it. Phaeton got two. Oh, okay, um, cool. You see Go the little it. text in the middle? Yeah. There? Uh, so two plus three five, boom! Like you, you jump, kick, snap him in the side of the head. And he falls. Can we? And I miss with a punch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because he failed. Oh, he yeah. would have hit with Oof. that punch for sure. <clears throat> You're lucky. It's, he's very lucky and also unconscious. Um, Barrage. Yes. Uh, what do you do for the next brief bit of time before you have to pass out from this, oh, sure. Uh, this sure. surge? Uh, uh, I turn to look at Coco and I say, Coco. Look at me. And then I run my sword through Jack. Oh, man. And then I pass out. And you're out. That's great. Uh, let's take our mid-game bio break. It's not even mid-game. Sorry. Uh, but we will take a break here. And... Okay, we're back. Uh, Jay is with us in spirit and can talk, but it said he's a coffee snob and is doing something called a pour over. No! <laughs> Are you embarrassed? It's true. Oh, okay. it's a little bit embarrassed. Yes. Oh but man, should I should I edit that out? I'm no, sorry. no, you don't have to edit to it out. out. You. You don't, no, you don't have to edit it out. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I, that takes you know. a really long time. Editing out is a thing I am loath to do, but I do it for you, Matt Jay. Don't have to do that. Big. Okay, uh, so uh, I think we come into uh, a passed out Tucker and a blubbering Coco, who's very sad because Jack was his litter mate, and uh, he's dead, and he, he had to witness it, right? Yes. Which yeah. which was the one that decided we're going to steal your ship? Jack. Oh, all right. I was just doing what Jack said. We were gonna do. He's he's the he's you know he's older, so I gotta do what he says. I can't believe you guys killed him. He's so mean. Uh, and I imagine, but that at any point. Um, we can declare the barrage just woken up from his D six times ten rounds. I'm not really worried about that because <laughs> you took over the situation. You can allow as much time as you need to transpire. That was crazy. Uh, I thought for sure uh, barrage was dead, 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 like OSR dead. I'm not afraid to kill y'all. I proved that in the first session, so. I'm appropriately OSR, I guess. You've established your bona fides. Yay! What's the plan here? So I think um, Ada's going to be working on Barrage, you know, sees that he took a big hit, and, you know, be, be doctoring him up and seeing what I can do there. Cool. 
Uh, so, according to Explorer's Rules for Healing, uh, you can use the Medicine skill to restore hit, hit points. I don't think anyone has Medicine. Yeah, only the Scientist has Medicine. That's, that's great. Uh, but we'll allow you to roll a d6. We'll say that you're using up some of the Bacta. Because yeah, otherwise so, this is real yep. boring. I'll do that. How long does it take for HP to come back? Uh, one week of rest will return a character to full hit points. D6 hit points per day of uninterrupted rest. Gotcha. All right. So I'll be on the mend for a little bit. So here's my D6. And I got a four. Okay. That's not bad. Oh, what's that? That's me. Four out of 17. I think that's all right. I'm not a, I'm not a great, you know, medic. I'm like stitching you up and like, pouring some back to paste on it and it stings and unpleasant yeah i think in between their bar barrage will be like do we keep at least one of those mutts is one of them still alive yeah they're yes we have two <laughs> we have a backup you got a backup <laughs> Okay. Which I, I imagine is uh Maze's job and I will while you two are busy with the with the mending is Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds yeah. perfect. I imagine that Maze is dealing with uh see Maze and Phaeton. Where did you guys gra drag your two prisoners in onto the ship? What what part of the trident do you think you're at? Let's see. Uh is there is there a reason not to do it where the fight occurred? Like, yeah, <laughs> let him know we mean business. Like you saw what happened. Right. <laughs> There's memories in this room. <laughs> what have you done with the body of uh, the long gone into the forest, uh, Jack? Um, hasn't been that long, right? Like, no, it's been minutes. I think Ada just kind of pulls like an old cloth or blanket kind of thing over the body and lets it sit there for a little bit while I'm doctoring Barrage. Man, Coco keeps looking over at his dead litter mate and his corpse. He's messed up. Where is Ada and Barrage? Also in this room? Where the fight happened. Because yeah. Barrage didn't move that far, right? You don't want to don't want to don't wanna transport him. Uh, oh, nice. So then as much as Barrage is able to, he does not break eye contact with Coco. It's crazy. What did you guys even want? I don't have me. He's like, you got my credits. I just want you to know. Telly's going to be real mad. He's going to be real mad. And that's not my fault. That's just how it is. You don't need to worry about him. You need to worry about us. You tried to do something very, very stupid. And you have a chance to get away relatively unscathed. He looks, he kind of glances over at Tucker, who's passed out with, I guess, a staunch, like, it's, yeah. it, I mean, it's cauterized, but yeah, he sees the. Okay. And I think when he looks away, like, look at me. We want to give you a chance to get out of here, to bury your litter mate. And care for your companion. I don't, I don't really like Tucker. What you do with him on your time is your business. <sighs> Maybe he never wakes up from his injury. I don't care. All I want to know is who hired you. And I forget the name of the crystals. <laughs> who hired your outfit? To Leon, Leonine, Teledine, Lexanite. To steal the Lexanite crystals. Just a name. Yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. He's going to give you an answer. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need to uh, have a role to see if, if he gives you 
a true answer or what he thinks you want to hear. Cool. I've got I've got a backup plan too. There's plan B. Awesome. Sounds good. I like I like backup plan B. Is that is that something you're rolling because you're the referee? That's a great question. Should I roll in secret? I don't know. Nah. And, and I'd just rather have it out in the open. You guys, I trust you. You could play dumb. It's fine. Uh, oh, how do we do this? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, I think it would be a presence, unless you have a, a, a meditation of some kind, it would be a presence-affected save for you to do it. Well, I can't just get, go right to the meditation because I do. Okay, uh, do that. Yeah, I can read his thoughts. So, like, when I ask the question, I imagine it pops into his head. Oh, um, well, then, yeah, he then tells, yeah, whatever that, he says, you know. That's amazing. He will say, um, that's great. Sorry. I love it. I love it. I'm just, I'm just really excited about this. I think it's more to... fun if he does try to lie and he says one name and I'm just like, he's totally going to lie. Oh, yeah. so it's so-and-so. He's going to say, uh, yeah, yeah. That stupid buzz chub, uh, Ando, the one, uh, the, the one he, he, uh, he sold it out. You were working for him. And, um, and the name in his head is Governor Bursted, who is the uh, governor of uh, Rutan. Uh, so I, I repeat that, even though he just said, ah, Governor Bursted. Uh, no, it's, it's, the, it's the buzz job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Buzz chub, you guys. And if Barrage is still looking, kind of look over at him and be like, anything else we need? No, that's it. That's good. And just kind of look back at him like, you can go now. Okay. I'll give the governor your regards, Coco. He's terrified by the idea of the governor uh, having his regards, and uh, he will, if you let him, he's going to go over, pick up his litter mate's body, and leave Tucker behind, because, you know, he can't carry two dudes, so he's going to carry Jack, and he'll get out of there. So I think Ada turns to Barrage and Phaeton and says, it's very cruel of you to let him go. You should kill him because you will kill him fast and quick. But the governor and the gang, if they find out that they that he ratted on them, will kill him very slow and he can only run for so long. And Stop. by the way, Stephen is not trying to convince you guys to kill him. I'm right, just right, trying right. to make sure he hears right. this. Right. And I'm like, I'll even turn to him. Ada turns to him and is like, I would run as far as you can, as fast as you can. Because I don't know how long you'll be able to stay out of, you know, the governor or the gang's clutches. And he, he, he whimpers, uh... Yeah. Yeah, thank you, droid. And then he'll stagger out of there down the gangway and carrying the sheet covered body of his litter mate. Uh and he will go on a run. Go on the run. Coco, the Clatuidian, may show up at a future Star Wars Saturdays game, but he is out of here unless you guys do so something. So he takes about his it. He takes his dead litter mate over the live one? He's got to go bury his litter mate. Um, wow. The other one isn't his litter mate, right? It's Correct. Just, well, know... right, right. But over the other, right, the one who's alive, the, the other mm -hmm. Klaatu who's alive. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't like Tucker. He does not like Tucker. He's leaving him to you. Yeah, now he's our problem. What are we he's do your problem. Man? I'm assuming we have some type of holding facility here on the ship. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, let's check. Why would we assume that? We have a map. 
do we have? We can just dump him here. We don't need him, right? No, we don't. Yeah, but I don't um, want them, you know... Ada says, I don't want, you know, a gang on our track as well. Right. And we just hit them, so we should at least drop him off someplace further away. Right. I agree. Or we could just, you know... Bloodthirsty. We're not the good guys, are we? I'm a good guy. <laughs> Maybe he wants to join our crew and help us. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think Ada's right. At least, like, there's if we're gonna drop him off, the weed doesn't need to be here. Like, right. He can recuperate as much as he wants. Like, you know, they, they tried to get the drop on us, but we were trying to get the drop on them in the first place. So, like, no hard feelings. No, uh, it was always going to be this way. Well, I mean, I was hoping we wouldn't have to get into the dismemberment part. Just be like, we we borrow them. We say, who is the guy? We let him go. Easy peasy. Uh, right. I agree. But it didn't happen. So. Fine, fine. But his rations come out of your shares, not mine. Who says we have to feed him? I, we're not keeping him that long. You're talking about letting him recuperate or whatever? In the cell, in the holding cell. I'm thinking a couple days, and then we cut him loose someplace far from here. So Ada walks over to the unconscious Klatunian and shakes him down to see what kind of, uh, what he has on him. I, I assume he has a little bit of credit from being at the bar. He does? And I'm going to pull that out and toss that to Maze and be like, here's your ration. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm good. Yeah, he's got a, a few crumpled up death sticks. He's got a comm unit. He's got some creds. He's got a fake ID. A comm unit. Yeah. That's interesting. Right. But Barrage about ready to make some prank phone calls back to the Telex Terrace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Tucker. This is Tucker. <clears throat> what Tucker? Okay. Um, so you don't have a brig per se, but you have a cargo bay that you can easily just throw him in and secure it. Okay. So if you do that thing, that's a okay. So Governor Burstead, yes. um, he is uh, a recently installed governor of the planet of Ruten, R U T E N. It's in the Serenia system, not far from where you are. I'll I'll bring up map just so we're all on the same page. And also, I like maps. I can't help myself. So if you remember, you're in the Lazarian system. Right. Up here, it's a two-day trip to the Serenia system. Oh, that's great, because that means uh, we could get out of here before uh, the Poodoo hits the fan. Yeah. Yeah. And I have two days I could heal while I'm just resting on the ship. Yeah. So you can roll 2d6. Unless you folks have business still here. No, I think we're ready to go. All right. And then we can drop Tucker anywhere between here and there. Why don't we drop him off on the Serenia system? He's going to want to stay away from those guys just as much as we are. Right, and I was going to say, give him the same warning uh, Ada gave Coco. I like to see, I kind of like to see, so Ada's gave that warning to Coco. Phaeton, I think Tucker's going to, like, want to talk to you. So he's going to, like, hey. Hey, you said you, you had a guy. <laughs> he 
bangs on the, you know, he'll bang on the door. He doesn't try to force his way out or anything. He's like, I know you can hear me. Yeah, I can go talk to him and pull pull down the road and be like, Yeah, I do. He'll hold up his like stomp. Occupational hazard in our line of work. Yeah. So I guess what what do I gotta do to meet your guy? I don't have any credits really, but I you know pull the trigger. I've done some work. <laughs> can you can you say <laughs> offhand? Oh, that's a that's a bit of a yeah, right hand. Yeah, he's, he's left handed. He's not left handed, he's right he was right handed, but he, he pretends he's left handed. He's just listening. So he's uh, he's lying about being able to shoot again. Okay. He could still pull a trigger. Yeah. Just not accurately. Exactly. Someone standing in front of me and not moving. I have the accuracy of a stormtrooper. I really, I really need this. My name's Tucker. Are you uh are you a Jedi? I I think I'm still evasive on this. I, I I've been called many things. I saw your uh your, your like laser sword. Thing. Yeah, that's that's true too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you didn't. I've already used that meditation. Oh well, I mean, this could be a day later. You could have that again that's if you true. want to mind wipe him. Uh, but it's way more interesting if a guy's running around telling tales mm -hmm. about me. So it is pretty interesting. Um, I think I'll just. Uh, there's more of us than you would think, uh, and we all talk. Kind of given like the so, so don't mess around, buddy, because we don't need any more trouble from you. That wasn't any trouble. I thought. I thought. I thought we were getting a job, and then Jack was like, "We're going to take over the ship," and uh, and then a fight broke out, and then I. Uh, I got my arm cut off. It was a whole thing. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. I shouldn't I should just went back to the base. Listen, you guys. Governor, you don't want to deal with him. Oh, but he even know. I don't think he even knows about the governor or anything because he wasn't there for the questioning. He was passed out. I feel like I was... Getting ready to tell him that just to be okay. like, look, we're going after the governor, and if that's going to put your ass in hot water, then you need to be prepared. Oh, for I that. don't like that governor. See, he 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 wanted that Lexanite because he's going to be using it against. He thinks there's a bunch of rebels trying to take him down. So he hired us to grab a bunch of Lexanite. Well, it didn't, it didn't go so well. Uh, the, the whole thing blew up. Yeah, you killed a bunch of my friends. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not here to get you. We're here to get the guy that ordered the hit rather than the hand that pulled the trigger. And I will just like, like, he looks down. He looks down. Yeah. How long are we going to do the hand thing? I'm a little sensitive. It's... That was my favorite hand. If he could have just gone after the left one, I'd be less broken up about it. Probably. Well, the next time you get your hand stuck in a door, I'm going to recommend you do the, the same one, honestly, because it'll be a cyber hand and it's a lot easier oh. to replace. Okay. These things are solid as a rock. And hit it against the, the door and the piece pops off and I just put it <laughs> in my robe pocket because I, I don't have a great cyber hand. Hmm. Okay. Which which Rich can activate for disadvantage. I know. Anytime I want. Anytime I want. There's your little in fiction reminder. There. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. He says burst dead's terrible. So I don't... he poisoned his own people. You you guys should go kill him. You you're good guys. You're a Jedi. Ah, uh, I can't believe I was gonna say this, but you know what? It popped in my in my head, so well. We could use a hand with it. Not, 
Not two, just the one. Yeah, that's the one. Am I getting paid? Because I got to save up for a hand. An introduction to the finest cyber surgeon in all of the Outer Rim is not enough of a payment for you? No. I really like some credits. You guys took my show. creds in my comm unit. I comm unit, I get, but like it was just 15 creds. Come on. I believe that was he one he was one of the ones that agreed to the fake job, right? Yeah. All right. Uh him and Jack? Yeah, him and Jack. And Coco was, okay. Uh I, I believe you and Jack were promised 80 as a pair uh for the job we wanted to bring you on for. So what do you think of that? As, uh, for you as a solo act. 80? A day? You said a day. I remember that. I said 80. Okay, but if if we roll any people, I guess some of their stuff, loot. Fair enough. All right. Uh, and I think I turned to leave and I tossed him like a protein bar, the the flavorless goo that we have that is um, nobody else on the ship wants it. <laughs> yeah, he just munches it down. Uh, he's pretty excited and happy about that. So um, there you go. And uh, are you guys just dropping him off or is he now part of your uh, a higher link? This is OSR. You can do that. Yeah. Um, I I will bring it to the group and say, you know, Tucker has a beef with uh, the governor as well. Uh, and we, we've seen how much power he can bring to bear. Uh, four and a half is, is more than four. Are you suggesting that we take use of his services? Such as they are. He would be a liability. He might I... also stop a lot of blaster fire. Yeah. You don't think he'll just stab us in the back, steal the ship, and and take off the first chance he gets? Hold on, I might be able to have, have told that. Let me see how long the uh, read thoughts works. You might have been able to be monitoring him the whole time there. Uh, two hours. Pff, yeah. Does he have deceit in his heart, referee? <laughs> I mean, he's a pirate, so by default, yes, but that wasn't his idea. That was Jack's idea. He was real excited about getting a, a bit of side work going on. So he's probably not going to betray you unless someone stronger tells him, hey, this is a good idea. That's fair. He's as loyal as his type can be don't don't turn your back to him and we'll be fine and we can always lock the ship down <laughs> yeah that worked great last time <laughs> pokes you in the chest <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at time and realizing that Barrage's big uh, payoff, like payback thing, is going to ha- occur probably next session when Jay is a year. And that sucks. Uh, but. Is next session our last session as well? N- nope. It is not your next to last session. There are five total. The penultimate. Sessions. Five in one. This is number three. So we've got. 20 plus minutes if we can detail out a bit of the revenge plan maybe we could bring this particular thing to a close with jay involved we'll see how that goes uh but maybe we won't so what's the plan rutin is a yeah let's see 
there's not much information on Rutan in the Kira system sector. Mm -hmm. So what what climate do we think is interesting for Rutan? We've had a cold climate. We started off with a cold planet. We've had a temperate planet. We've had a jungle planet. Um, oh shoot, we haven't had the desert planet then. Okay, so Rutan is a is an arid. I, I think it's a de like a cold desert planet. So okay. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So almost like not heavy snow or anything like that because it's so arid. There's no, there's no snowfall. Sort right. of like there's the no Andes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's extremely dry right. and cold. Uh, but it is also firmly in Zinch's empire with Governor Burstead, who has been installed as the uh, as the ruler after the military arm of the empire subdued resistance on Rutan, he moved in, and he's been governing the planet for uh, about a year. Uh, he is uh, he's a person who works through his sycophants and gives titles to people that he likes. And also uh, he keeps the population docile, uh, mostly by trying to root out rebels. And this Lexanite plan seems pretty extreme for what he has done historically. Uh, so, um, as you guys land, yes, got a hand up. Got oh no, good, good, good. I have a, I have an idea. Yes. Ooh, well, I, I have like a plan it. idea, but I'll wait. Okay. Cool. Uh, because you're so, going to we'll, say something else first. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, let's let's find ourselves. Oh, so you guys land at. Uh, I don't want to call Rutens. Um, doesn't actually describe their capital city, so let's give it a cool name. I'm gonna look on our names. The species is named after someone. Could be uh, named after the governor. Oh yeah, it's the <laughs> newly christened Burstead City. <laughs> That's it, Burstead City, which it it is. Uh, it is the main spaceport. It is not. It is like imagine a um, a, an airport that is not international. That is the spaceport here uh, there's a relatively sizable imperial spaceport for the military um, but the commercial and regular citizenry use the spaceport in Burstead City and when you guys land uh, one of the things that you are made aware of is that um, there is a uh, the 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 annual Rutan uh, pet show is about to take place. There are banners and hollows and ads for it all over. And Governor Burstead actually is in a number of them. You see him with his cybernetic eye and his high collar looking uh, imperial. And uh, yeah, he's, he's speaking excitedly about the annual Rutan uh, pet show. So you had an idea, Barash. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, Barrage hyphen J, it, it's a mix. What if we, or can we, uh, expose the governor to the Imperials as a rebel traitor or a rebel spy, right? Somehow associated, right? And let them, right? Because that, uh, versus going in and trying to kill him, right? Um, but because I think that's the worst punishment if they get their hands on him as a rebel spy. Right. Mm -hmm. If if he's already trying to root out rebels and he's got this big, let's blow them all up. And there's an anti-rebel sentiment about it is the feel I get. Can we expose him as a rebel spy, even though we know he's not, but we set him up for that. 
So is our goal to make his life miserable, full stop, or to make his life miserable and have him know that it was us, or to make his life miserable and send a message to folks that you don't mess with us? Uh, I like that last one. You know, we're ruthless. I don't know. <laughs> we're not to be messed with. Although clearly we are. We are, we are going to be messed with. <laughs> You know, if it's just like, hey, you, you killed people we liked and now you must feel bad or we must tell people don't kill people we like because we're going to come get you. It, it seems hard to to set him up and also let people know that mm -hmm. we were the ones behind that's it. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. So I think we have to choose there. If we go for the, the setting him up plan, then maybe we, we can get let him know but right. people in general aren't going. And I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, we kind of undo the setup to be like, we're the ones that made everybody think you're, I mean, told them that you are, that you actually are. Right. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, so what are the methods by which you guys are going to uh, cause the Empire to be convinced that Governor per Burstead is a rebel sympathizer. What's your plan? You guys have any suggestions? Uh, planting evidence is always nice. I'm wondering yes. if we can so, use... Uh, so how okay. about if we hit one of the Imperial depots here, make it look like like rebels and then whatever was stolen we put on uh his you know in his in the governor's you know bank in his stuff right yeah uh, can we work the pet show into our plan yeah just right out there I yes because that's pretty public it's very public so could we take something that we could plant in the pet show that he probably shouldn't have. Mm. So kind of what about in the, uh, the Lexanite thing? Because that was something that he was actually involved in. Right. That was uh, like, um, if we could, though, so actually, that would, if he was involved in that, then that would be, and he's a rebel, that means that the rebels were doing that, and that seemed weird, maybe. Um, so, one thing we could do is, he's been very vocal and excited about this pet show. If that pet show is used as a distraction, it looks like he set that distraction up. Right. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, during the pet show, you know, we dress up as his guards and hit something. Oh, we dress up so it looks like he sent people, hit something Imperial, and then put it in his compound. So what's important enough that they would think it was rebel, oh, it was rebel, a rebel alliance? Well, information. Right, right? information, yeah. Yeah, I could see information being important for sure. Oh, But we yeah. also oh. have to not get caught. Right, we have to not get caught, right. Uh, well, or of rebel prisoners. Ooh. Right? If they have yeah, rebel good. prisoners, we put the, the rebel prisoner in his... Maybe that's awful. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Because yeah, okay. we, we have freed a rebel, right? To put him in the compound to be caught again, right? But if uh, we go back to the information route, we could steal yeah. Imperial troop information right. and transmit it to the rebels from his compound yes. on a channel that can be traced back to him. Right. We could also, like, if they're using extra security for the pet show, that means there's less security in other places. Mm -hmm. uh, so that could be something. I like, like that. Showing that he's, he's prioritizing this instead. So. So we need two covert things. One, of course, to steal the information, but make it look like it was his people. 
and two, to transmit it to the rebels, making it look like it was him. Yes. So that's the two hacks that we kind of have to do. So, like, if we steal some uniforms or something, we, we can always, like, uh, leave something behind at the scene that's right. clearly traceable. Um, well, that could be, like, a, a maybe just a comm unit or something, but it has to come from his people. Um, we have a comm unit. We have a comm yeah, unit but... that was used by his lackeys. Yes. True. Yeah, maybe there's enough information on that. That would be cool. Oh, yeah, and we can basically just send information um, to the rebels saying, you know, as per usual, we will send the data um, we will send the data at the recorded time from the recorded place, and when we leave that behind, that tells them that tells the Imperials when the data is going to get transmitted and they'd be looking out for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This feels Every... like enough of a plan, right? Yes. <laughs> until, until, of course, the dice screw us up and then we go to plan C. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Then we all die. That's, yep. uh, that's tomorrow's problem. <laughs> that's right. That's tomorrow's problem. Okay. So Ooh, and you sound... got 10 minutes to pull this off, Rich. Oh, man, this is wild. Uh, so I, how, how do I even make this in OSR? Any suggestions how we should set up a... It feels like the multi-point plan is um, you've got a comm unit. You want some information on Imperials to transmit to the rebels, to the New Republic, from the governor's compound. And yes. also something that will be caught by the Imperials. Right. Okay. Are you making up the sensitive information? Or is this some sensitive information you want to get access to so that it has some veracity to it? I think it's got to be authentic, yeah. How do you get New Republic sensitive espionage type information? Wait, you're communicating rebel stuff to the rebels, so it's imperial sensitive information. Sorry. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you said that there was an imperial base here. Yes. And I think uh, we could sneak in and try to steal troop movement information. So that would be step one. And then step two is break into the governor's place um, and transmit it from there. And I don't think this has to be like super sensitive information. Right, right. Because right. with everything else, it, it could just be something incredibly basic. Because it we're just setting belongs it up. to the Imperials. Right. The, the important thing is that it's Imperial information that he's transmitting to the rebel. Right. So it could almost be observation of troop movement counts what yeah. what is in that base right so you wouldn't even have to infiltrate the base to get that yeah. most of that information i mean to be honest we probably don't need to infiltrate the imperials because i'm sure the governor has all of that information about the coming and going off planet and all that kind of stuff we can just infiltrate his place and then transmit it to the to the new republic that sounds like that halves our job that sounds I logical agree. And, we're uh, halfway done already. That's right, we're halfway done. <laughs> but we need to. But, but I, I think there's. We need to plant the like the comm unit and that thing, right? Or am I missing something? I think I think all we need to do is make sure that the comm unit that is on Tucker is that the guy right. that we have. Make sure he gets picked up by the Imperials. But he's going to he's going to rat us out, like uh, unless we kill him and they. No, we find his we took body. a comm unit off of Jack, who I killed. Yeah, they each had a comm unit. So if you yeah. wanted to use okay. that one instead, that's fine. And I thought we could just leave it behind. We we might not have to leave Tucker behind. Um, 
Okay. But we have yeah. to leave the Kong unit somewhere where it will be found by someone who isn't the governor's people. Right. It has to be found by someone who is in a in a position to position and has interest in in exposing. So this would be where we would find uh, uh, his second in command, who's incredibly loyal, or something like that. Or um, I don't know. This, this seems else. unlikely. Why would people not be loyal to <laughs> an, an imperial <laughs> governor? Either. I don't know. Or, or maybe the transmission is sloppy, and that's how it gets picked up. Right? Uh, if it's being yeah, transmitted there might be from. Too much... There might be too much information if we give them physical evidence. If it's all in the, in the transmission and it's sloppy, it's just coming directly from him. The Imperials pick right. it up. Right. Maybe it's using an old code. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so you've got you got to spend, spend a day doing a little bit of research. Uh, everybody who's lost hit points, roll a d6. I assume that's just barrage. Probably just barrage. You're back up, though. You're up to full now, aren't you? Uh, not quite. I'm three short. Okay. Roll us a d6. Yeah, just I'm three short with the four. Oh, okay. Uh, so you gather enough details to where if you don't find anything at the governor's compound, you've got something to transmit. You've got the comm unit that you can plant and is as fate would have it, I have a map of Governor Burstead's compound. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, cause that's just amazing that you want to break into his compound. So uh, there are a couple of stormtroopers near the main gates. They do have a small landing pad for uh speeders and the like. This is a three meter high outer electrified fence. Uh, his manor is inside, as well as a barracks for stormtroopers. And then this is his little menagerie, his little zoo, his habitats for all of his various animals that he um, he will choose one and put it into the annual pet show. As you guys are doing your last bits of information, you find out the Governor Burstead's annual pet show happens pretty much every other month because uh, he's always won. He's had it five different times and five different prize winning animals. Um, he's very proud of his prize winning animals that have all participated in the uh, the root and annual pet show that is not at all annual. So <laughs> I think I think we get we come down to one roll. It's gotta be on Barrage's shoulders. Uh Give us, I think, a save. We're just going to go for a regular save. You can use, if you tell me which stat you're bringing to bear, we can let that affect your roll. But this will be the break-in uh, roll for all the marbles. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Uh, I think I think we're trying to be fast and quiet, right? Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we're not looking for a fight. Uh, we're just looking to get in. Um Low signal, uh, transmit this stuff and sneak away. Okay, well, for all the marbles, uh, let's see if you successfully sneak in. When it drops in, does the d20 count or you bring it in rolling it? Uh, let me get to the page one d20. No, whatever I, yeah, it's, it'll be my brown color there. I'm just gonna drop it, and okay. there it is. Boom. Oh, good God. Oh, good Lord. Okay. All right. So, oh. a, a one is an automatic miss and may result in uh, dropping a weapon or tripping some other fumble. A fumble causes the attacker to lose their entire next turn in combat. Soldiers or creatures with multiple attacks lose them all. Um, I think what happens is that you guys... I imagine Ada is backup pilot, right? Phaeton, as you're coming through, uh, you get a bad feeling about this. 
maze everything's fine you're great you're you're like made for this you guys hop the fence um you're able to do this during the pet show so there does not appear to be a large number of not a large amount of security uh you pop in you race across the landing pad you come in the rear entrance of burst as manor all ninja style the three of you um but just before, as you come into the, the main room, uh, just before you guys are able to create the the communication and send it out, you, you break into Bursted's actual office. You find more details on the Lexanite and how what his plan was to use it to dispatch a rebel cell that he had found that is near uh, Bursted City. And then uh, Phaeton, again, that bad feeling surges again, and stormtroopers come rushing into the office right as you guys are making the communication, and all of you are arrested. Uh, I'm not going to allow you to fight because you'll fight until you die, uh, so I am GM hard moving it. And yeah, somebody's going to say bad feelings so very much. That's very true. Uh, but yes, um, you guys are captured by stormtroopers in Governor Burstead's office, and we will begin next session with Barrage being tortured by uh, a torture droid, and uh, Phaeton Rouge and Maze Voji in prison and Ada outside. And that is how things will end up. So with uh, Mad J. Brown out for next session. There's no XP. You will be fourth level. Next time when you play, we will be playing uh, the next game uh, du jour uh, is going to be Spacer. Okay, I don't know that one. Okay, uh, It is a hack of um, Knave. Ah, okay. So uh, that is that is it. it is a 10 page game on itch free of charge. Uh, it was recommended to me. The people said Knave is a great OSR game. There are no classes. Every PC is a spacer. It's going to be wild. There are no skills. It's all D20 rolls using the standard six abilities. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, real quick, anybody have any wishes? Sorry, Matt J. You can give me a wish for two two sessions hence, but I will not grant your wish next session. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. I, uh, I wish to see more... Uh... Of our crew in action, uh, I think we're we're hitting the groove. I like it. Oh, sorry, I meant to ask this question. Uh, you guys get to determine: um, is Tucker with you or with Ada? Oh, I think with Ada. Yeah, I don't have a strong feeling on it. Ada, I think. Okay, I don't think we want to risk bringing him in, having him be captured. We know he'll roll over real quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um I'll I'll state a wish, which is I'm a little worried if we don't have any classes or skills that the characters will be very samey. And I'd like to see that there's a difference between them. I'd like to revise my wish. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish to see, because you said bad feeling twice, and my brain went one way, and you went a different way. I wish to see that bad Jedi. Oh, it was yeah. The bad Sith was a thing that I, I was like, yeah, can I give that? It's gonna, sh he's gonna show up. He works yeah. for Burstead, you know. Nice. It's gonna happen. I so. won't be here, but I, I want to hear about it. He's hanging out in the background. <laughs> Eat? I have to depart right at time today. Okay. I apologize for a That's sudden okay. departure. Look Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing most of you next week uh, and Jay in a pair of weeks. See you, Keith. Have a Thank good you. one, folks. Andesh, any wishes? Um, Not really. Looking forward to, to see how we get ourselves into even worse trouble. Sounds good. I mean, prison breakouts are a Star Wars trope, so 
we will definitely have that. Cool. Uh, well, let's let's do a quick round of stars. And she went last with wishes. You get to go first with stars. Any stars? Yeah. Uh, this was fun. Uh, we went kind of dark with it, which is uh, that's okay. I don't mind. Um, yeah. Uh, I like uh, Jay. I really like you leading into to Barrage being a, a really terrible person. I should say, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> uh, but that thing where where you uh, where you uh, look was was it Coco in the eyes and stabbed uh, Jack? That was that, that was harsh. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's a John Wick thing that stuck out that's very for me, <laughs> yeah. right? In the first uh, movie, <laughs> uh, Stephen locking down the uh, the the ship that was a smart move. I I really liked that, and uh, Rich <laughs> leaning into uh, these uh, cartoonians being so pathetic once we beat them. That was. That that uh, made me feel kind of bad, and that was good. So, <laughs> okay, back. I'm glad that that's good. I was like, should I make them more bad guys so you guys feel heroic? Oh no, this was great. Cool, Steven, What about you? Any stars? Um, I really liked how Barrage was pushing towards the action. It was like, oh no, we're just gonna go grab these guys. Oh no, we're gonna take them in and hire them, and then you know the plan. I think, Jay, you mentioned I have no plan, but, like, it seemed to push us towards action, which I really liked. Um, and, Anders, I like you, you know, being very calculating, like, you know, where's their food coming from? I'm I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to keep them around, you know, for no reason. It needs to, you know. Um, that was hilarious. Yeah. So. Cool. Thank you, Stephen. Jay, any stars? Uh, big star for uh, Tucker. Tucker's conversion. Uh, I didn't see that coming, but I kind of like it. And it seems like uh, outgrowth of, uh, or the development of the Klaatu's all together. Uh, so I like, yeah, I dig that he's kind of part of the crew now. So I kind of like that. That's pretty awesome. Um, no, like I said earlier, I think uh, stars for, I feel like as uh, characters and as players, I feel like we, we kind of hit a groove and we're kind of moving like a dance together and i kind of like when that when that happens i like it i'm real happy with uh with a follow-on like now there's connective tissue there's a story there's a thrust there's the things you're trying to do you guys are definitely not the goody two-shoe rebels you're not evil you're this like other thing that feels very osr murder hobo but not exactly murder hobo it's just like you're brigands your trouble I like uh brigands. and it's okay I, I dig it it's interesting i i think things are taking shape and i look forward to the next two sessions yeah. i also share your concern about uh steven your concern about like there are no classes how do we differentiate um we'll find out uh i it's mostly by gear i think so those y'all who didn't buy any gear i guess you're, you're pretty savvy <laughs> <laughs> we can always go shopping that's true and uh amazing you guys really won't have gear at the start anyway because you're arrested so we'll see how it goes it's gonna be interesting uh thank you guys so much for uh playing i really appreciate it and with that we'll stop the recording here